This is Herb Shapiro with the Dr. Vax channel. And today we're going to do something very interesting. If you're in the market for, or you know somebody that might be interested in an entry level 3D printer that's very easy to use, Monoprice offers two models to choose from. Now, if you're handy and you're willing to put some things together, there might be other alternatives. If you're willing to spend more than a couple hundred bucks, three or four hundred bucks, there might be all their alternatives. But if you're looking for something around two hundred dollars, the Monoprice, Delta Mini, and Select Mini are two excellent printers to consider. We're going to look at today which you should select, why you should select them, and as importantly, we're going to show you a way to use matter control from matter hackers so that you literally can take the printer out of the box, plug it into your laptop, load software, and start printing. No mess, no fuss. So if you're in the market or you're looking to help someone else get started in 3D printing, a colleague, a parent, a grandparent, a child, Stay tuned and let's learn something together. When you first look at these printers, they'll seem to have as much in common as different. While they're completely different styles of printers, this is a Cartesian printer. That means the print head moves back and forth in both directions and the print bed or the print head moves up and down. And this is a delta printer, which means the print head is suspended on three axes and moves along those paths. They're both made by Malyan, M-A-L-Y-A-N, Malyan. This is the Malyan M300. This is the Malyan M200. In fact, Monoprice also has another Malyan printer, their MP10 printer, and MP10 Mini is the Malyan MA10 printer. So what's common across all the Malyan printers is they're built really solid. They're built like a tank. They're built from sheet metal. They're fully enclosed in sheet metal. There are no plastic parts on these printers. You basically take them out of the box and they're ready to go. Or at least that's the idea. And in fact, with the Select Mini, that's very, very true. It comes pre-calibrated, meaning the bed is already leveled. You take it out of the box, you turn it off, you can print this cute cat from the SD card. We'll see how to connect it to a computer and continue printing. Unfortunately, with the Delta Mini, it's not quite as simple. While you take it out of the box and you can print this cat and it will print well, when you go to print other things, you're likely a good percentage of the time to have some difficulty. And the challenge is that things will not stick to the print bed, to the surface that the prints reside on. And the reason is that the distance between the nozzle and the print bed may not be optimal because every printer's a little bit different. Now on the Select Mini, if you need to re-level your print bed, you do it by adjusting these four screws. They're very easy to go, get to. And I have a number of videos on the channel that teach you how to do that. I'll show some links in the corner to those videos. Easy to do. To do that on the Delta Mini, you have to modify the Start G code. And if you're an experienced user of 3D printers, that's easy. You can go into Cura, your slicer of choice, and do that. Even if you're using matter control that I'm going to show people how to use today, you can do that. But it's a bit complicated. And the reason is this has auto bed leveling. That means there are no adjustment screws. Instead, the printer senses the distance between the nozzle and the print bed. It does that in a very creative way here. If you push down on this print bed, you'll hear it click. And the reason is there are switches in the corner. So it literally uses the nozzle to push down on the print bed to see when it clicks to determine the distance. However, then there's an adjustment called the Z offset. 
and Z offset is available on all printers that have auto bed leveling. You have to adjust that. There is no way to adjust that from the front console of this printer. Many 3D printers that have auto bed leveling, you adjust it from the front console. Here, you have to go into the G code to adjust it. So to begin with, unless you get lucky and this printer is perfect from the factory, you're gonna have to mess with some G code in order to get prints to stick to this print surface. The next thing that's interesting is this is not a removable print surface. Neither is the standard Delta Mini printer. However, this is a little easier to get to because you can slide it back and forth. And so if you have to pry your print off, you can get to it. This is a little harder to get to. So I literally bought a sheet of glass. I put some silicon on the back. You buy pads of silicon, you just cut them to fit. I put masking tape on the top and then the silicon's a little sticky so it just sort of holds it in place. And then I can take this off to remove the print. In the case of both these printers, I highly recommend that you spread some Magi Goo, M-A-G-I-G-O-O. -O. It's a proprietary compound solution to make print stick on both the print beds before you start printing. In the case of the Select Mini, that's all you need. This will be easy and simple to use. In the case of the Delta, not all the time. I'd say 50% of the time my prints fail and here's a picture of what that looks like and I have to start over again. I have to put some more magic goo on. Maybe I have to change the masking tape. If I hadn't upgraded this with a glass build plate, I would be scraping off the old print, putting some more magic goo on and trying again. So to begin with right out of the box, this is an easier print to printer to use. Now, after you printed the model that's on the SD card, if you download a model from Thingiverse, how do you go about printing other prints? Well, the recommendation for both these printers is to use Cura. Cura is an excellent, excellent slicer, but it's not able to successfully connect over a cable to either of these printers. And I think it's much easier for someone new to 3D printing to just take a USB cable and connect to their laptop or their desktop, load a model, slice it, and print. Slicing is where you prepare it to print. So I recommend using Matter Control from Matter Hackers. Okay, let's start on the matterhackers.com website. You're going to select Shop, and then you're going to navigate to Software and Add-ons. Click Matter Control, and then download the appropriate software for your Windows or your Mac. Now, once you've done that and you've installed it, when you open it up, you'll open to a screen that looks like this. On this screen, you're going to press the plus key, and then you're going to navigate down to mono price. And I'm going to select MP Select Mini version two. Now you'll notice there is no entry here for the Delta Mini. However, there's a gentleman by the name of Matthew Up that has produced wonderful wikis. Those are basically blogs or websites that have information. And one for the Delta Mini and one for the Select Mini. I highly recommend if you have either of these printers, you go to that website and I'll put a link down below in the description. And on there, there is a profile to use the Delta Mini with Matter Control. However, we're going to set it up today for the Select Mini. So we're going to select, Select Mini, click Next. Now, what Matter Control does is brilliant here. They tell you to unplug or turn off your printer. Then you click Continue. 
What they're doing at that time is making a list of all of the things that are plugged into your computer. Then they tell you to plug in the USB cable or turn on the printer. And then when you click continue again, it will automatically find that new device, that device that wasn't there before and connect it. So we'll see here it now has a disconnect option. So to print, I'm going to click on the file folder. We're going to select a 3D Benchy. And then we're going to move this so it's in the middle of the build plate. And I'm going to click on this little button here that says Arrange All Parts. I can go over here and change it to a model view so I can see it uh, in color. Or I like the overhang option. And I can use my mouse to move around, to rotate, to zoom in and out. Now I'm going to go over here to Slicer. I'm going to leave it on standard quality. I'm going to pick PLA. I'm going to click Slice, and that will convert the model from a three-dimensional model into a model that's ready to print. Then all I need to do is click Print. It's going to ask me to set up my printer just to verify that I've loaded PLA. I'm going to say already loaded. Then I will click print and start print. And our printer is going to start to print. It's that easy. With matter control, it's much easier to control your printer. Now it will show me the progress over here. So we can see right now it's heating the bed. It's currently at 24 degrees out of 55 Celsius. At any time, I can stop the print or pause the print. Once the bed is heated and the extruder is heated, and you'll see the current temperature is also up here in the corner, it will begin to print. So you can see the extruder is already up to temperature. Now, for those of you that are more advanced, you do have all of the standard settings for a slicer in matter control. Being quite honest, is it as good of a slicer as Cura? It is not. But it is a very capable slicer, and the ease of use in using it with a printer such as the Select Mini makes it ideal for someone just getting started. So while this is heating up, let's look at some models that were printed. This is a calibration cat that was printed on the Mini Select, and I've printed many, many things on this printer. It's a great quality printer. This is a $200 printer. It does a fantastic job. These are all models here that I've printed on the Delta Mini. The initial models were covered with bumps. So you can see in this close up here what these models look like. Now I was able to tune it and this is the profile I downloaded from the wiki because, as I said, there's no default printer profile. But tuning a printer profile in a slicer is probably not something that someone brand new to 3D printing would want to do. We can see our print has started here. Once the print has started, if I turn off model up here and I turn on sync to print, We'll see it actually progress on the screen here. Let me zoom in a little bit. And we can see it now actually printing this model. If I turn off sync to print, I can use the scroller to look at the various points of the model. I could change the angle so that we could see it. So matter control has all of the standard capabilities you're used to in a current modern slicer but I find it extremely easy to use. In addition, and it's not a topic for today, it has a full modeling capability. You can use it like Tinkercad to create models from scratch. And if you slice a print in another slicer such as Cura, you can load them into matter control and print them from here. So as a tethered print control environment, it's fantastic. Finally, it does have a terminal mode and you can see here the actual commands 
as they're being sent to the printer. And you could use this to manually send a command to the printer for calibration or other purposes. It has a control mode where if the printer wasn't printing, I could control the individual characteristics of the printer. So I think the combination of matter control and a low-end fully assembled printer is a marriage made in heaven. Let me summarize what we've covered today. This is about a $160, $170 printer. This is about a $200 printer. I do not recommend this printer for somebody new to 3D printing. It is very interesting to watch a Delta style printer print. It's fascinating. But the calibration of the bed, the need to modify G code, I'm actually going to stop this print here just by clicking on pause here. But the calibration of this printer, the need to modify the Z offset in your G code, the requirement to tune the slicer in order to get beautiful prints. Now, to be honest, if you use Cura, save it to an SD card, move it by hand, it does a better job and is closer to being tuned and there is a profile for it. But as I said, the combination of matter control and a low end printer is excellent for someone starting out. So I would recommend this printer over this printer. This printer is about 30 or $40 more, but this combination I think is perfect for somebody just getting started with 3D printing. Folks, thanks for watching today. I hope this is helpful either for you personally, because you're valuing these printers, or you're thinking of buying a gift. This is the price of a microwave oven. Well, an expensive one today. They're now cheaper, but let's say a Mixmaster. This is the price of a Mixmaster and would fit equally well in somebody's kitchen. And then they have the ability to print useful prints, 3D phone cases, practical prints, brackets for shelves, toys for the kids, and just to learn something new every day. So thanks again for watching. If you like this, give me a th thumbs up. Recommend this video to people you know and let's continue to learn things together.